Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and I'm going to be taking a look at my first of the Gigabyte Z97 boards and this is the SOC Force and I'm going to assume that it's Super Overclock Force. Now the Force name was generally used before on the really expensive OC board, the one that was upwards of £300. I even saw it at kind of around the £350 mark in a lot of retailers. This one, surprisingly, even though it's carrying that Force name, it's going to be coming in, uh, I'm hearing, around the 160 to 170 GBP mark, uh, and probably around $200. So it's probably going to be taking the place of the uh, lower end uh, overclocking board uh, from before, but the thing is, it's uh, packed with features, and I don't think there's going to be that stupidly high range board, most certainly not in the UK, uh, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, there's, there's so much to go through on this board, but the picture, I love looking at that picture. I don't know who took it. I'm sure one of my uh, Gigabyte friends is going to pop up on Facebook and say, oh yeah, that was me when we were doing such and such testing. Um, blatantly been done with Alan too, but I love it. It just looks like a, oh, a frosty winter morning. It's lovely. Anyway, so when we flick around the back of the box, there's a lot of gubbins on here. Now, one thing I can say is it's waste time me showing you around the box. If you're actually interested in all the features, what's on there, all the different panels and bits and bobs, click on the link to take you to the uh, review. Now, if, you, if you're on your phone and you can't get the uh, link in the bottom left-hand corner to work because it just seems to be a Google, uh, Google or YouTube problem at the moment, click on the link in the description and it will take you to the website and we go through all the mean fandango and you can bring up all the images and stuff or what everything is. But this is a video. You want to see the product itself. Da! And I'm going to slide the board over out of shot. Now, um, if you've got a blackened orange fetish or an orange fetish, this is obviously going to give you some severe nerd on or nerd gasms, however you would like to call it. And it is a properly pretty board as well. Um, uh, the, the black and orange, uh, for me, just says high cookie because the, 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 the original X58 OC board was high cookie's baby. I do think they Gigabyte as a whole have watered it down um, a lot. And by that, I mean they've kind of added features on there for the average user. As the original board was just an all-out overclocking. If you didn't need it, it wasn't on there. Um, masterclass in motherboard engineering. Um, but the, some of them now are, uh, I think it's a little bit confusing, the fact that we've got a killer gaming network chip on there, the fact that we've got a separate audio panel down the side. I mean, I'm not being funny, how many times on your, uh, if you're actually overclocking and running Sub-Zero and stuff like that, how many times have you actually been worried about your audio? Um, when I'm benchmarking, I don't even have the audio plugged in. Um, but anyway, so features on the board, we can see that we have uh, four PCI Express um, 16 slots down here. Now they are wired 16888. I can't talk about how they um, correlate into the chipset, but the uh, top PCI Express slot here is the very, very top of the board. So um, the Noctua NHD15 <laughs> won't work with this board. Um, and this is one of the problems I was trying to bring up when I was uh, uh, reviewing that heatsink. But anyway, we're going to kind of skip past that. Where you can see around the back of the board, you can see the separate PCB kind of trail there for the audio. Now around the back, we've got a lot of USB 2s, muchly welcomed. But uh, for a lot of overclockers, you'll be pleased to see that there is still a PS2 port on the back. Uh, I have a PS2 board that's probably, <laughs> it's so old and battered, but you'd be amazed the amount of times that a USB board won't connect. Chuck the good old fashioned beaten beige keyboard PS2 in there, bosh, it gets straight into the BIOS. Um, D-Sub, we've got uh, DVI, we've got full size display port, HDMI, and an optical out, four USB um, 3s, digital audio there, and then obviously the killer gigabit network port. Because uh, at the end of the day, you know, you may end up using this as a normal system board. A lot of people kind of pick them up in the end because they just want an orange colour scheme. And I can understand why. It's just the, uh, the, the, the OC name was uh, first penned as like a properly stripped back um, overclock board. And now it's a bit more like the Republic of Gamer stuff. Yes, they're 
brilliant overclocking boards but they fill them up with all the other stuff as well so it's just you know just kind of a more mainstream type board. I'm just going to take a picture of that can I get my hand out of shot this is basically so that for the YouTube oh yeah I can't really let's have a go anyway right so uh, some interesting things on the board uh, Gigabyte have been renowned and I've uh, used the original X58 board with these and you can uh, actually up the multiplier and up your base clock with simple buttons on the screen and you can have the operating system running and everything and then fine tune when you're in Windows and essentially what that can be if you're just going for a CPU Z shot or something like that you can actually uh, get into Windows because this you, you know it might be hanging if you try and push it too much on startup get into Windows a couple of flicks of a multiplier or a, a um, uh, the base clock it can be the difference between you know uh, world record uh, clock and a non world record clock and uh, for those of you out there that are just CPU Z tarts that's all going to be there we've got um, voltage points down here there's some more up here as well and you've got the little wires in the package that you can uh, use for that PCI post there there's obviously you're always going to need that you've got a selection of buttons here and because I'm half blind I can't actually read what they're meant to do. I should have written out there's BIOS switches and all kinds of stuff, but we've written about all of these in the um, uh, little bit there, in the article on the website. So if you want to go through and take a look at what all these do, and there is some pretty funky stuff, but my favourite thing is they've finally added on some dip switches. Now, dip switches for the PCI Express lanes are really handy because if you've got them all water cooled or all frozen and one of them breaks, it can stop the board from post posting. So you can basically just go through and start turning PCI Express lanes off. And when you get to the one that's faulty, it will, um, by switching off, you're technically removing it from the system and your system should post again and stop it from hanging. But what Gigabyte have also done is they've introduced the dip switches for the memory slots as well. And that I think is a brilliant thing because uh, the memory capabilities of uh, Haswell and the newer boards, I mean, we're seeing like the boards are supporting up to 3300 megahertz out of the box. And that's without ridiculous overclocks and stuff. So I can see that, you know, memory clocks are going to go so mental now. Thank you very much. Who is it? I don't know who you are. Right. So I've just muted my phone. I probably should have stopped the camera, but hey, we're always the, uh, the professionals here. Now, I really do like the look of this board. The heat sinks, they do just work. It's, they've got a lovely design to them. Nice bit of contrast. They're simple, they're chunky, and it's just doing what you'd want them to. They're not offensive. It does just, it just work for me. Um, I, one of my colleagues at the site, he's a, he's a very a big black and orange freak. And uh, I, I pretty much had to resuscitate him when I showed him the photos of this. He was just like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Now, uh, I'm, I would have assumed, because the last Gigabyte OC board was so popular, it was just so many people were using them. And it's a great little kind of entry tool if you just want to learn to fiddle. I mean, just these buttons down the side can uh, be the difference between you getting a really good um, CPU Z uh, shot and not. You've also got like a tag button here, so if you uh, have to clear the CMOS, you can save a profile, and then you can literally just hit the tag button, and it applies all your old, all the saved settings again, so it will instantly boot up at you know wherever you wanted to have saved it. There's quite a few little bits and bobs. There's a hell of a lot of fan headers on here. There's seven in total. I have to admit though, when it comes to again overclocking. It's not necessarily something I ever really run them off of like headers and stuff. I ended up just running them off of a Molex. But if you're going to end up using it as a system, that's going to serve you well. Um, we have got SATA Express on the side. Uh, the internal USBs, again, uh, is going to be handy for those of you that have got it running on a, on a bench table. But not necessarily <laughs> if you have it running in your, in your case might get a little bit difficult but anyway so that's our first look at the asus z97s super overclock force uh, don't forget to click the link and go and take a look at the uh, full article on the website there's a hell of a lot of information there and the only other thing that i've not mentioned and i've just seen it on the side and it's where i've not had the box is this it's a as a stand so essentially if you've not got a bench table you can still run uh, graphics cards and have them bolted in 
on the side of your board. I've, they, this isn't a new thing, they've had it with a couple of other boards in the past, but it's just a nice, easy thing for those of you out there that are running like your motherboard on a box and stuff. Gives you a nice, decent, boltable brace to mount your graphics cards to. Which, that's something I really like. But, anyway, I needed to keep this uh, short and sweet. If you can hear any noise in the background, like hissing, it's actually not hissing. It's teeming down with rain here at TTL Towers at the moment. But for now at least, with our first Gigabyte Z97X preview, out. Ding!